Okay, first off, um, let's see, no possessions other than what you have hidden away in a dimensional pocket, like if you have like the sword trick thing going or something, all your other possessions are uh, elsewhere. Elsewhere in this case, they're in your room back at uh, red carpet. Nice and safe. Just I, if you want to make a note or circle around it or whatever, you have none of that shit unless it was in dimensional pocket. Also, I got to look because I got a rusty below note. I made a special note for you. Hold on. Let me find it here. Mm, let's see. Um, your, your matrix power, uh, in your case, I believe healing it's, it's working fine. No, nothing has messed with that. Um, let's okay. see, uh, hold on. Uh, where you're going to be, there is no sewer. So, um, sorry, but <laughs> Hold on, I got I've got a note here. I actually have to generate a couple random things for you. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Weird. Uh, right. You have uh, two two tarot cards. You have the Sun and the King of Pentacles. They're just in your pocket. You don't know why. If you care, it's the Rider Weight tarot deck as all the other tarot cards you've ever seen have been. Okay. You got that? King of Pentacles and the Sun. Yes. The Sun and the King of Pentacles, yes. Good man. Okay, next. Let's see. Uh, is there anything else? Okay, opening scene. Oh, Special modifier for your character, which I will tell you. Oh, wait, no, that comes up. Right. Uh, first off, welcome to Russ, who is the only guy who managed to be completely on time for season three opener. Okay. There's a feeling of falling in several bright flashes. Something that sounds like a clumsy robot on bad hydraulics trying desperately to do something with the crackling of fire close by. At this point, you're stepping through some sort of gate which deactivates behind you. You smell ozone. The gate itself uh, is kind of a round shape, like uh, uh, that old movie uh, Stargate, something like that. But the okay. gate itself seems to be really old. It's made of stone, wood, even some packed earth. There's a couple of guys with shaved heads and brown uniforms who are pretty much ignoring you and the group of people you're with and watching the gate. The room itself that you're in is old brickwork. You are with a whole bunch, maybe 50 or so, of other scared-looking 11-year-olds. Uh, there's a kind-faced man with odd eyes who is uh, uh, hurrying up to meet the group. Um, he's wearing a strange uniform and he has a holstered pistol that seemed completely at odds with his demeanor. And he wears the uniform like something he's like, he's not used to wearing this kind of uniform. At this point, you realize you are also 10 years old. Please give me a sanity roll. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. How many points? One point, it goes towards something called form changing, which maxes at 30. Also, there's a special modifier that you must remember, or I will mess with you endlessly, until you figure out how not to be young again. And basically, that's your damage dice on the damage track is down by two places if it's something like you hitting somebody if you go and find daddy's gun that does full damage right <laughs> because okay, so. you know you're a fucking 10 or 11 year old or whatever now all of the probably, probably can't even lift the sword i've got in my dimensional pocket <laughs> i don't recommend uh trying no you're you're th you're looking at your little spindly fucking 10 year old arms going yeah, um, yeah not happening all of the kids here, uh, male and female, 
are all uh, clean shaven on the head. There's a sm sharp smell of urine. You suspect one of the other kids has pissed themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, about half of the kids have uh, epicanthic folds on their eyes. What's that? That's that's the uh, Asian thing where they have like the thing. That's okay. the proper name for it. So in other words, some sort of like Asian uh, thing, but could be from fucking anywhere. Um, right. All of the kids are dressed a bit differently. Your clothing looks like you're wearing very simple looking standardized clothing that looks well used and reused and handed down and stuff like that. Um, and the, oh, give me an empathy roll. This is for the group of children you are with. That's a success. Uh, all the kids' emotions range between scared, wet themselves, on up to excited and eager. So you've got a huge range of emotions. The guy with the odd eyes goes, well, I would like to. And then he fucking looks at you and goes, uh, excuse me. And he turns and begins strolling uh, down the hallway. Give me an empathy roll. And then, yeah. okay. And a, he strolls casually down to the corner. And then give me a listen roll. Also a fail. Okay, great. Um, uh, the other kids are looking at you, and one points and goes, "What's wrong with your eyes?" Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you smile and nod and go, "Yep." And then, yep, I, I knew. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, does does the guy? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but does the guy have similar? Solid eyes. You said he has odd eyes. Are they are they yeah, odd in a way? Uh, on on the first picture with the teachers thing, mm -hmm. uh, look for English teacher. Okay. When you when you see his eyes, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, cryptozoology, librarian, social studies, arts, English. Oh oh, Marty Feldman eyes. Okay. Exactly. In fact, uh, yeah, it is Marty Feldman you're thinking. Holy shit, what is Marty Feldman doing here? Right. But um, you notice also the brown robed figures who were hanging out looking at the gate, because you've been through enough gates, possibly created a few of your own. You know what a gate is, so I'm not going to fucking play with that. You notice that those brown robed figure guys who were watching the gate are now kind of altering around and uh, watching you. Kind of right. like, uh, we're ready for him to start some shit, but you notice that none of them appear very physically imposing. Uh, none of them are carrying any weapons, and they just keep their distance and watch. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a Japanese bow. Okay. Towards them. I'm going to, I'm going to look at them meaningfully and, and bow and see they, if they bow back. No, they just watch you. Okay. Eventually, uh, the guy who was wearing glasses with the odd eyes, Marty Feldman dude, comes mm -hmm. back. And uh, he, with him is two other people. One's a hard-faced man, uh, find the Jack Nicholson uh, headmaster. And yes. the other is a hard, uh, tough-looking woman. Uh, she's the black lady. I think her name starts with an M. Hold on a second. Let me look. Teachers, Mikoni, uh, Mikoni. She. Oh yes. Okay. Right. Oh god, Mikoni. You, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the zombies? All right. All right. Yes. Take a, take a card for knowing who she was. I had no idea. Um, right. They come back. They walk in the room. All three of them. The guy with the glasses, Marty Feldman looking dude, looks like he was getting ready to point you out, but you're just sitting there looking, and the other two kind of look at him like, we know, we see. They look at you, they peer at your eyes, and they uh, say, uh, the, the, uh, the hard-faced man, the headmaster guy goes, how are you feeling? 
Now all the other kids fucking move back a little bit. This guy, you can feel a physical presence off this dude. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling very young. Great. Uh, the woman looks at him like, mm -hmm. he goes, mm -hmm. excuse us a moment. You're calm and everything's fine, right? Um, I don't know exactly what this gate behind me is, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm not going to start anything. Great. That's, that's just the, the standard gate, you know, from, from San Angeles. You're, you're okay. I, a little disorientation is normal. Excuse us a moment. All three of them go around the corner. You can hear faint murmuring as they talk to each other. Give me a listen roll of negative 30 because they're trying not to be overheard by you. The bastards. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a fumble at negative 30. So, Do you think we should eat him? I don't know. I prefer crocodile. Potato, 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 says the guy with the glasses. I am, I am feeling itchy, says the headmaster. Let's all use the bathroom together, says the lady. And then they come, uh, uh, then the hard, the hard man, uh, as he's uh, uh, ushering the guy with the glasses back, he says, normal in processing, if you please, Mr. Claw. The guy with the odd eyes and glasses says, very, very good, headmaster. And the other two, the, the uh, hard-faced guy and the black lady, leave. The okay. guy with the odd eyes comes back. And he begins, uh, he takes out like a, a scroll and begins naming off people. And eventually he does say your character's name, whichever name you've been using uh, the most. Uh, he probably wouldn't use my, my stage name, so I'm Jake, Jake Ebersol. Well, no, no. It, it, um, actually, you've got two names, but which, which have you lived by most? Actually, no, hold on. Let's do it at random because I have no Jake idea. Jake Rock, yeah. Uh, so it's either rock or Eversol, right? Odd, it's rock. Uh, no, no, no uh, Eversol rock Eversol or Jake Eversol. Okay, yeah, he does go with Jake, actually, okay. which is weird. Great. So uh, when he when he says Jake Eversol, uh, he gets to it. Do you want to acknowledge it or just stare his ass down? Uh, yeah, I make a, a rather surprised look. Um, no one's called me that in about 20 years, so... He gets a he gets an empathy check. I'm 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 surprised that he knows my my real name. He does not seem to pick up on it. <laughs> and uh, do you want to acknowledge it though, or just? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, are people saying here? What are they doing? Yes, uh, they're saying here, sir. Here, <laughs> things like that. Here, sir. Good. I uh, right. He still appears to be flustered and stuff. Uh, the 30 to 50 kids, all of them seem uh, aged 11. Uh, he says, those who have bags, please just leave them here. Your name should be on them. They'll be moved to your rooms later after you've been sorted into your houses. Yes. <laughs> no problem. You go down a brick corridor, around a corner, down another brick corridor, through some sort of operations room. Uh, I'm talking more like uh weird machinery and stuff uh, rather than people stitching up each other okay. uh, past a security checkpoint with watchful looking armed guards down a pillared corridor and emerging briefly into the outdoors a uh, very large courtyard with a fountain in the middle uh nighttime vapors caress the building there seems to be a lot of kind of wispy vapor around okay Mm -hmm. And then you're led back into a building through a big fucking door, which is really big considering you're fucking tiny. And eventually you come into a huge room. It's much like the fucking Hogwarts uh, meeting hall with a shitload of students all sitting on benches. Some of them are wearing uniforms, which I actually have a picture for. Oh, shit. Ah, there we go. Oh, shit. I've got lots of pictures. Logan's been fucking up on this for you. Here we go. Uh, oh, got to move Russ with me. There you go. And let me unveil some of the darkness. Okay. First off, here, this here, it's in the upper left-hand corner, Russ. Yeah, I see it. 
That's the uh, uniforms that uh, the teachers wear. You are wearing pretty much standard, uh, like you're thinking orphanage clothing, you know, kind of like um, burlap bag turned into clothing. This is next to it is what uh, students are wearing. Uh, right. Here is the gate you came through uh, if it was nicer than the one you actually came through. This is the size of the door that you came through, which you can see is very big. And this is one of the courtyards you went through. And here is a neat corridor thing you went through. Okay. Um, this round gate, how does it compare to, uh, by memory, the, um, the gate we found in the alien city with the vending machine? There was a contortions mm -hmm. off there to a round gate. You're thinking different manufacturer. Take a card for asking clever questions, Russ. You are figuring out lore and shit. Of course, you may never tell anybody else about it and then make them figure it out for themselves and then laugh evilly at their inadequacies. It's up to you. It's all yeah. up to you. So anyway, uh, right, moving back to it. Um, now, uh, the students on the benches range from 11 years old to maximum 16 years old. Now you can look, you, I'm sure you've already seen the picture of the teachers. They're all at the high table. So mm -hmm. you can see all of them. There's your, your, your uh, pick of the teachers. And I'm sure you probably recognize several of them. Right. Now the uh, headmaster says, uh, he stands up. It looks like there will be a feast coming up, but not yet. Uh, he says, before we begin the sorting ceremony, I have a few announcements. He looks around with an intensity of a laser beam. He says, welcome to the Shadow Academy. You are here to learn and prepare for your mandatory military service. The forest is strictly out of bounds. Years one through three may only practice the obstacle course under the supervision of a sixth year or a teacher. It is hoped by insisting on this, the number of accidental deaths may be reduced to a more acceptable number. For the upper classes that will be competing this year, we are pleased to announce we'll be hosting the Portal Institute from San Francisco. Lots of murmuring and stuff. Empathy roll. Success at half. Oh my gosh. The teachers give each other quick, nervous glances for some reason. Uh, people are still murmuring. At this point, the headmaster whip crack intimidates the school into silence. There we go. <laughs> and he says, this is just one of the initiatives for peace that our leaders have decided upon. As the Shadow Academy, we will do our part. There will be no heavy glare, lapses in hospitality while they are here. They will also be attending the school dance. More murmuring, more whip crack intimidating into silence. And I, after looking in your direction for a while, you are not seated with the students, obviously. You're in the getting ready to get fucked position with the 30 to 50 other kids. He says, we also have a student who seems to serve one of the colors who will be joining this year. Murmur, murmur, whoosh. He says, it's not blue or yellow. Ah, everybody kind of goes, he says, I expect them to be treated as any other student, should I hear. Otherwise, the names of the offenders will be passed to drill instructor Hapablat for additional training. In conclusion, we have all three of the magically active ranks, Magus, Adept, and Gifted here. The lower ranked ones will have to work harder to prove their merit, but someone who is very motivated can surpass someone of higher rank through grit and hard work. If you think your Magus rank will get you a free pass into the Shadow Core, you are sadly mistaken. <laughs> you think that he heard that chuckle because nobody else said shit. They were all looking like it. <laughs> Now, uh, he looks at you kind of like, hmm. and then he goes and sits down. And uh, 
the Mr. Claw guy with the uh, the English teacher, he is with your group and he turns to you and he says, I'm Mr. Claw, the English teacher. I will be walking you through the next part where we can integrate you with the other students. You must be brave. Everyone here has gone through the same thing. Now, also, a quick note on the uh, uniforms people are wearing. There seem to be four different color of arms, okay? Right. Like this table has all this color, this table has all this color. I'm sure I'll eventually get to, oh yeah, I will get to what they mean. So um, he says, the start of term banquet will begin shortly, but before you take your seats in the grand hall, you will be sorted into your houses. The sorting is very important ceremony because while you are here, the house your house will be something like your family within the Shadow Academy. You'll sleep in the house dormitory and spend free time within the house common room. Now, the four houses are called Hydra. They're the ones with blue sleeves. Okay. Dragon, they're the ones with green sleeves. Phoenix, they're the ones with yellow sleeves. And Bobcat, they're the ones with red sleeves. While you are at Shadow Academy, your triumphs will earn house points, while any rule breaking will lose house points. At the end of the year, the house with the most points is awarded the House Cup, a great honor. I hope each of you will be a credit to whichever house becomes yours. The pips on your shirt will in indicate what year the students are. The sorting ceremony will take place in a few minutes in front of the rest of the school. I suggest you all smarten yourselves up as much as you can while you're waiting. Okay. Uh, I need to discard, so we need to get off the picture page so I can... Right, you are. Chuck a card down. Uh, yep. And there we go. All right. Taking you back to that page, because four students begin wheeling out some weird big thing. Now, I've got two different pictures of it, but they're to give you an idea of what the fuck I'm talking about. It's a big log thing like lots of different logs and it's got holes in it. Do you recognize it? You're smiling yeah. like you might. Flash Gordon, yeah. Take a fucking card, you badass. Well, it's <laughs> nice knowing you, Logan. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. I got such great cards. I got, it's hard to oh. figure out which one I'm going to discard. Yeah, I'll take uh, you back to the discard page. There you go. You can see why with all this introductory stuff, I was trying to get everybody here at the same time to go through it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun when uh, when Jeremy comes comes in. <laughs> That's okay. I I'm taking notes as uh, as you say, it, and I'm missing stuff because I would miss stuff normally. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's. Because of the way he's going to come in, he's going to be leaning on your knowledge of a lot of this shit. Right. So, happy days for you. All right. Uh, I move, uh, moving you back to pictures. Okay. So, the weird fucking log things that you believe are from Flash Gordon. Quite right you are. And they, they push out this multiple tree stump holes in them thing. On, uh, it's uh, mounted on wheels and stuff. Push it out into the, the it's be just in front of the teacher's table at the front of the great hall, and there's a lot of cheers from the students. Um, and it is explained by the English teacher that the students are to stick their hand deep within whatever hole they wish. Some people, he says, steadfastly maintain that the hole influences which brand you will get, while others have a different opinion. It will hurt and quite badly, but you must hold back the pain for the pride of your new house. Okay. Now, you are not the first, which is cool, but you know, uh, you get to watch other kids, like uh, they, they read off their name and then they go and stick their hand in there. And whatever the fuck is going on, it is painful. Uh, all the kids politely clap through the ones, uh, like, all the kids politely clap, uh, except for the one, whoever the, the kid was chosen for the house of, they clap louder and stuff. Um, unless the kid cried out or showed pain, 
uh, at how painful the brand was. A couple of the kids actually faint and uh, the like before they even get up there and the teachers have to fucking hold them and stick their arm in there and shit. One kid tried to do the, eh, you know, and something grabbed his arm, yanked him all the way down and held him in there and there was extra screaming. <laughs> um, and what happens is uh, you get, you like each time that this happens, there's a brand here. Let me unveil more to show you what the, these are on, it's kind of in this area that the brand is, okay? Mm -hmm. And here are the four different brands. Bing. Okay, right. Now, as you can see, for the studio audience who doesn't get to see it, it's a stylized Bobcat, a stylized Phoenix, the Dragon, which is going to look very familiar to anybody who's ever played Skyrim, Skyrim. some sort, sort of three-headed Hydra thing. So, uh, eventually, it comes to your turn. Now, this this is a big deal because you can tell that, and plus, everybody's paying close attention because you got fucking weird eyes. Um, although, also, just so you know, uh, give me a feel roll. Not a, something I ask for a lot, but. Yeah, no, that's not going to do it. No problem. Uh, re just remind me uh, to mention it when you eventually get to get to bed. But okay. for now, give me a willpower times three roll. This is the big, how well do I deal with this pain roll? It okay. all comes down to this. Mm. That is times two. That is pretty good. Let's see what the times two result is. I've actually figured out. Uh, times three or less, lots of applause. You bore the pain well. Uh, if you got in times one or less, you may have yawned while it was happening. <laughs> but um, no problem. It's better than the fumble, which is scream shit yourself, passed out, rolled up, round while unconscious, had to fucking be picked up and covered in shit. Um, your <laughs> brand, take a guess. Which I'll give you a card if you guess which brand you get. Uh, I'm guessing Bobcat. You are correct. Take a card. <laughs> you kind of knew it was happening. Why? You're thinking, why? Why is it always Bobcat? Bobcat. Yeah. Bobcat. Do you know why it's Bobcat? Bobcat Studios. That's part of it, yeah. It's weird, you're thinking. I don't know. I don't know what the the greater meaning of Bobcat is, but I'm starting to suspect something. Mm. Um, let's see. I'm not going to need a pilot card. Um, oh, also, you can give me a spot hidden after you get done discarding one of your cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a success. I think I've gotten some points in spot hidden since I started. Oh yeah, that's a success. Did you turn up your mic? Because your volume seems to have increased. Huh? No, I didn't. I suspect evil. Okay. Uh, is it still is it still loud? Hold on. Let me see if I can adjust it on my end. It might be a little easier. Uh, control room. Press. Say stuff. Hello, Logan. How you doing? Perfect. I don't know if I'm loud. All right. Okay. So, uh, right. Um, now, uh, did you make your spot hidden, sir? Yes, it is. There's this girl uh, who has like a uh, dark eyes, frizzy hair that looks like it's been barely corralled by uh, like a scrunchie or whatever type thing. Uh, slightly greasy skin. She, she like just before you went up, she just looked at you and goes, we're going to be friends. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know who the fuck you are, bitch. But yeah, um, she's she uh, didn't seem freaked out at all by your eyes. Other kids seem at least a little freaked out. Some of them are really freaked out. She mm -hmm. didn't. She just looked at you and goes, we're going to be friends. And then just fucking pay attention to her shit. She's also in House Bobcat. Thought I'd mention it. Anyway, mm -hmm. now, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, Bobcat. 
The people serving at the feast are sullen looking elves wearing simple knee length tunics, hose, and also collars and wrist shackles. Mm. All of them have runes and shit on them. They're overseen by a smattering of human slave masters because these aren't the adorable fucking house elves. No, these are the, you know, full size elves and shit. But uh, let's see. Um, uh, more announcements made while you guys are all eating. Uh, it feels like you haven't eaten in a while. Good news. Bad news is your stomach is a lot smaller. Good news is you have a child's fucking hunger. Right. Please shoot that bird real quick. Uh, let's see. The announcements are. <laughs> let me hold on. Let me get up and close the window. That'll help. Oh, okay. Just shoot it. Shoot it. There we go. Almost I, got up with my headphones on and ripped them out of the machine on it. I'm telling you, I do that all the time. These headphones are fucking beautiful. I don't even notice I'm wearing them a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The announcements are the following. If you have any questions, be sure to consult with your fellow students or house prefects. Um, also, as you know, the purpose of the Shadow Academy is to prepare you for your mandatory military service for San Angeles under the rule of the Council of Shadows. Hmm. Okay. Those of you who survived this long and difficult training will be well prepared to defend San Angeles and humanity from the many threats it faces. When you finish with your meal, you'll be given a brief tour of the school, which shall end in your common rooms. Do well in school. After you graduate, your grades for the six years you are here will be trans tabulated to determine your spirit pentagram. Now, after the feast, I'm kind of glossing over this. The kids and stuff with the, you know, that weird girl with the fucking mop of hair and greasy skin. She just sits next to you like, ah. and there's plenty of room to do it because uh, the people in your house are like, yeah, we're okay with you, but you know, and then she does something weird. She goes, you don't like him staring at you? Hold on. She reaches over into one of your pockets that you didn't even know you had, pulls out a pair of like the dark round spectacles. She says, wear these. They'll forget. Okay. Um, thank you. And I uh, look at the pocket. Is there anything else in it? No. no Just the specs. All right. I, I, uh, I put my specs on. With By the time food's done... Kids seem to have forgotten. It's fucking creepy as shit. Give me a Sandy roll for being creeped out. Plus, the little girl's sitting a little too close to you. Yeah. Just a little, like a couple inches too close. Like, if she was just a few more inches away, everything would be fine. She's not. She's sitting like, I've known you for years. Okay, if you can crit a Sandy roll, I just crit it. You're like, yeah, I deal with weirder shit than you. Fuck off. So, uh, right, after after the feast, you are given a tour of the place. Please look at the uh, uh, Shadow Academy map that I have given you. And uh, now I, I will do some explaining to you. Wow, that's some bubble map, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> The sewer one is just as complicated. Now, here's the deal with it. That's about half of the shit. There is another half out there. But unlike the sewer one, which, as I've mentioned, is meant to be confusing and frustrating and irritating, this one will also be somewhat confusing and frustrating. But you're starting with a little over half of the shit. If you choose to go exploring and shit, you can find more shit, lots more right. shit. Now, um, let's see. Oh, by the way, you do get introduced to the house prefect. Uh, eight at night, you're supposed to be asleep. Um, by 10, or eight, eight o'clock, you're supposed to be in the common room. 10 at night, you're supposed to be lights out. Uh, wake up time is 8 a.m. Everybody meets for calisthenics down at the parade ground. 
You have new possessions also, which I will list off to you. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, yeah, give me a second. I need to name those on here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, your new possessions include the following book bag. This is one of the uh, side slung ones, like a Johnny Appleseed type bag, if you've ever seen one of those. I don't know the proper name for it. It's it's um, Satchel works. Satchel. Thank you. I will write that in. Uh, several school uniforms, the daily wear variety. Okay, so red. Go Bobcats. Yeah. Uh, workout clothing. Okay. Gloves, leather, sturdy. These are not fuck around like, you know, these are like, I can go work with roses and shit type gloves. Right. And various books for classes. And in your case, also the dark lensed spectacles, which, um, it, you, you don't know what the fuck is up with that. You don't yeah. remember having them before. But uh, let's see. Uniforms. Um, right, right, right. Okay. Now, um, player briefing. Basically, I'm going to run you through a day of classes to give you a feeling for what it's like. At this school, you got the weekends free during the long ass school uh, days. It's 13 classes a day plus PT. You wake up in the morning, drag your exhausted asses to bed at night. Uh, every play session, you're going to get a few checks, not per day, but in one play session, as long as at one point during the play session, you quote, attended classes then you're going to get it. Uh, not all classes give checks. If they don't, you're assumed to pass that class with flying colors unless you irritate your teachers. Uh, there's a lot of, at any time you can go, yeah, just cut to the weekend where you can do shit on, basically it's an exploration type deal where you can go find out about the school and stuff because you love fucking exploration. Instead of the sewers of fucking disappointment, it'll be the school of disappointment. Happy, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a few things that are going on in the school. If you want to figure them out, Russ, great. If you don't, uh, great. If you want to explore until you find the exit and then get the fuck out, great. Great. You can do any of that shit. Believe me when I tell you, Russ, pay attention now. I'm not running Harry Potter for the full fucking six years. You're not going to do your mandatory military service after that. Not happening, okay? <laughs> Everybody else, this is their life path. You are different. You, uh, yeah, no. We're this not is more like that. Smurf Village. It's very much temporary. Okay. Very temporary, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, now also, uh, I wish I could shoot my neighbors. The, the teachers always seem a bit hazy on you, okay? Like, uh, oh, and you, you there. They, they get your name and shit, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, and they don't do roll call. Okay. So okay. let's go through the uh, one day of classes. Um, let's see. After the calisthenics, which I'm going to come back to later, because basically there's a lot of shit going on, but it's not until the last class that you're actually going to be going and doing more shit there with D.I. Hapablat. But uh, the first class is theater taught by Nigel St. Nigel. Welcome to theater. We are going to have a preliminary line reading to see where your acting skills are. If it is only half as bad as the preceding classes, it will still be a comfort to the world when some of you will die here and in training and others will give their lives for San Angeles. Now, Russ, give me a role on acting, mimicry, and talent. Okay. Acting at half. Nice. Uh, mimicry, that's a writing, right? Uh, no, no, it's there. Okay, I got it. 
You got it? What? No, no. I, I see it on the sheet. Uh, um, mimicry is a fumble. Yeah, that's a fumble. Um, and, and your talent, please. Talent is a fail. He, he critiques it. He says, your performance makes me want to weep, then die. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, very, very well then, sir. He rolls his eyes and he says, let's just be glad that today is not Parents' Day. Um, also, we should be glad that we never have Parents' Day. Hmm. Now, uh, give me a D8, since you are attending classes, to see what your random check from uh, this class will be for this session. Right, six. Session slash adventure, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mimicry. That is fucking hilarious. All right. Um, right. During the class, one of the days you're there, not necessarily the first, one of the girls raises her hand when called on and asks, Sarah, is the Phantom still hunting the theater? About half the other girls squeal. Some of the boys look uncomfortable. Others curious. Nigel St. Nigel rolls his eyes. The Phantom has not been seen this year at all. But, sir, she says, this year is just starting. <laughs> Nigel say, Nigel, I'm sure you will be perfectly safe from his prying eyes. With the quality of performances I'm seeing, I think you will go into deep, deep hiding. <laughs> he seems like a fun person, you think? Yeah. Ne next class, cryptozoology with McCone. She wanders around class at least half the time, muttering incomprehensibly to herself. Eventually, she stands in the front of the class and says, cryptozoology, I'm going to teach you what the different creatures are and how to kill them. If, they, if you don't kill them, she tells the class of 10 or 11 year olds, they'll kill you, your friends, your families. And the kids are like, ah! and she has no empathy at all for that she's teaching small children. Um, let's see, she said, and then she does look at you and go, all the monsters will be killed, even the ones masquerading as human. Hmm. And she looks psycho to you. So from her attending her class, you get a uh, check in cryptozoology. Basically what this skill does, it's a new write-in skill. Anything Russ can remember from the D and D monsters manual type shit which has monsters from all over the world, um, you might know if you make your role. Weird shit and unique monsters are not covered under the skill. Anything that Logan comes up with because, you know, he has too much goddamn time on his hands, you're probably fucked. Right. Next class, English with Sidney Claw. Turns out to be a relatively normal class. He nervously ignores you. Uh, go ahead and give me your uh, role, high or low, please, to see what you learn in his class for this session. Hi. Philosophy. Nice. By the looks way, like is this... A, hmm? That looks like it's a writing skill, is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it is. I don't see philosophy on here under PH. Is there something else that might be under? Not sure. Just put it as a write-in skill. You can always move it later if you need to. Right. Plus, it starts at your learn, so, you know, you're golden. Right. Okay. Next, history with Tony Ramirez. He's a Spanish-looking individual with dark, good looks and apparently crippled legs. He gets carried around by uh, weird golem legs that give off kind of smoke and shit. Give me a spot hidden, by the way. 